I'm Paul Ferguson from the West Belfast Athletic and Cultural Society. Friends, I would like to welcome you all here to Connor's Corner. Especially I would like to welcome the Shankill Protestant Boys Band. Here in their 35th year. And to thank them for donating this wall where for over 20 years they had a mural. The West Belfast and Athletic Cultural Society, along with other community groups and funders, came together to form the Connors Corner Committee to celebrate local Shankle man, William Connor, the people's painter. Right, I'll keep this brief. I would like to introduce Rashi McDonough from the Arts Council for Northern Ireland to say a few words. Well, you may imagine as head of the Arts Council, I get to go to quite a few interesting gigs. I have to say, this is one that will stick in my memory for a very, very long time to come. Um, it is an extraordinary uh, pleasure and a, very, um, and a great moment of pride um, that I'm very pleased to share with you. Um, this is a remarkable uh, transformation of an area that once held a contentious mural and is now um, housing an extraordinary statue uh, of a very remarkable painter who came from within this community and who I know you are all extraordinarily proud of for the right reasons. Um, the Reimaging Communities Programme is one that is close to my heart because what it requires is a leap of faith a leap of faith from all parties concerned and in this instance uh, from the band, from the West Belfast Athletic and Cultural Society, from local people, a leap of faith in that change is possible, it may take time, it is difficult, but change is coming and this remarkable achievement of yours today as at this unveiling I think symbolises um, the fact that change uh, is possible and that we have to all work extraordinarily hard for it. It also requires, I have to say, a leap of faith uh, amongst public bodies because it is not easy uh, often for public bodies to walk that journey with communities. I believe that they should be doing that. We need more of that. So this is one of 32 projects all over Northern Ireland and each and every one of them, I have to say, when you go and look at what has been achieved uh, by putting an artist into a local community, and it's not easy for the artist either, it's not easy for the local community, but together we can see what has been achieved. And I just am so pleased that you've asked me to be here to share this extraordinary uh, proud moment and to celebrate with you one of Northern Ireland's finest artists who came from here. Thank you. I would now like to call for Jennifer Hawthorne from the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. Oh goodness, it's so good to be here. Um, thank you so much, Paul. And I've been told close to the microphone. Um, I have a, the very great privilege of working for the Housing Executive for more years than I care to share with, well 36 I'll share with you, and um, this is one of the proudest days that I've, uh, I've had the pleasure to be participating in. Uh, I worked in the Schenkel for many years, we have been hugely impressed by the people of the Schenkel and their talent and their foresight to take things forward. Um, not least last week when we launched the wonderful Band of Brothers just down the street. And I know that next week we've got some other new artwork coming to the Shankill. I want to commend you all. It is a stunning um, piece of work. I am immensely proud, as is my organisation, uh, to be part of this. And thank you so much for allowing us to be part of it. I would like to particularly commend George and Paul. Uh, almost sounds like the Beatles, um, George and Paul, and of course the Cultural Athletic Society, and more importantly the people of the Shankill for embracing this amazing piece of art. Um, Connor is a, 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 a certainly an artist that I'm passionately, um, I was going to say committed to, but fond of, and uh, um, he really is the, the people's artist. But importantly for this community, he is a son of the Shankill, and I really hope that he inspires 
the rest of the sons of the Shankle to the greatness that he was able to achieve. So really well done, warmest congratulations and uh, you should all be very proud of yourselves. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Now I'd like to call forward Emma Malley, journalist, broadcaster and I do believe art lover. Thank you very much folks. I'm not here to patronise anything. Thanks to the people of the Shankill Road for turning up here today. And I want you to salute the Shankill Protestant Boys Band for saluting, for saluting a South Armagh man. <laughs> Thank you lads. I don't know if I'm the first South Armagh man to speak on the Shankill Road, but I'm glad to be with you. I had a wonderful day here yesterday with Plum. He gave me a walking tour of the Shankill Road in Woodvale. And my God, there's so much history here. It's extra, extraordinary. And Jackie Redpath was just telling me there a few moments ago that John Hewitt was born and reared just up here to my left and that his father was the headmaster in the Methodist school, which no longer exists. I knew John, John Hewitt. He was an extraordinary man. I, I spent some time with him in his little house uh, on Stockman's Lane and it was always a joy to speak to him. He was very, uh, quite uh, threatening, menacing in tone, but there was a gentle heart there. And he taught me, he taught me how to think about a broader community. He, he was very insightful and very generous in, in his thought. And uh, his little house has been sold recently. Uh, there's a plaque on it, and I hope whoever has taken it over looks after it. I didn't ever think I'd be coming to the Shankill Road to get a tan. Isn't it wonderful? Now, in terms of art, I've been collecting art some 32 years, and I've been reading about art, and I've known artists for 32 years. Sadly, I didn't know William Connor. I I've heard so much about him down the years, and I've heard about the hard times and the bad times. I've heard about his generosity, and uh, I, I can't be definite about this, but uh, I'm told that William uh, ended up a very poor man, but he was a very generous man. He, he gave away an awful lot of his art. But it, it's, it is sad that artists, when they're alive, suffer so much. And you would not believe it. Some of our best known artists today are living in total poverty. Total poverty. Um, they too were weak and they, they followed trends and they've bought properties in a small way, some of them some of them in a bigger way, and they've been hit too. So there are many, many artists in the Garrett living today, pretty penniless, uh, so they're no different to the rest of us. But what distinguished William Connor was, was his uniqueness, in, in my view, the way he captured the very essence of the people of this city. There is no living artist doing what William Connor did. He was a chronicler. He captured the very mood, the very essence, or the very quintessence of the soul of this, of this people, of this city. If you look at what he did over the years, he went to horse fairs, he, he went to cattle marts, he, he watched and observed uh, the, the shipyard workers going to work. He, he, he captured the mood of the factories, the millies, the shawleys. Um, he said that was his great strength. That's the great legacy. That he, that he left for us. And in a way, what everybody said, oh, I love William Connor, but I wonder, have we really given him the space and the attention which he merits? Because he was so of the people. He knew the soul of the people here. And that's why people uh, find that he resonates with them. You might know this, but those people on the Malone Road didn't hang William Connor. Connor in his early days. They didn't want to be reminded of the poverty in this city. So they, 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 they would have been hanging English painters, but they wouldn't have been hanging their own son, William Connor, because they didn't connect. They didn't feel that he was, he was reflecting what they wanted to see. So how times change. You'll find Connors now in many, many houses in the Malone Road area. And, and that's great because it's, it's very important that we have a sense of what happened in the past. So I'm going to leave it there. I could talk all night about art. It's just a passion. When you get it into your blood, you just can't get it out of your system. It's, you, you become obsessed with it. But I just hope that this is the start 
of something of a revolution in this area here, that uh, upon which uh, one can build this Connor, Connor Corner now, Connor's Corner. It's a wonderful landmark in your midst here. And there's so much to celebrate uh, on this road. And I hope that we can all make a contribution uh, to build and to get more people into here. I mean, the, the journey I had with uh, Plum Smith yesterday was so edifying, so enlightening, and so educational. And I just want to conclude by welcoming a lady here, if I haven't mentioned her earlier, it's Margaret Haddock. Um, uh, Ma Margaret hadn't been well for a long, long time. She made tea for me for years at Michael Flanagan's gallery in Donegal Pass and then on the, uh, on the Antrim Road. And I'm delighted, Margaret, that you're here and that you're looking so well. And George has been following for, following for a long time. You know him as Gary. I know him as George on Twitter. And I met, jo I met George Gary today for the first time. And thank you very much for inviting me here, partic particularly to Plum Smith, uh, with whom I have travelled many, many, many times. Um, if I get a chance later on, maybe I'll tell you a few stories about Huey Smith. I travelled a few roads with wee Huey, wee Shuey, and by God, we had some fun, for some fun on those trips to America and to Dublin and places like that. So, um, thank you for inviting me, and it's been a pleasure to be here. And thanks to the Shankar Protestant boys for saluting us today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Eamon. And I'd like to call forward Councillor Billy Hutchinson the leader of the Progressive Unionist Party, to say a few words on the unveil of the statue. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to talk, talk about Connor, but before I do that, Gary, your cover's been blown. <laughs> you just done it. Uh, everybody knows him as George on Twitter, but unfortunately, it's not blown. What I want to do is, I want to talk about, about, about Connor, and the reason I want to do that is because he was a fantastic artist, uh, and his work uh, obviously he depicted Belfast and he's done some country scenes as well and he also painted the first parliament of Northern Ireland in 1921 in Stirling. But for me, I just want to say a, a short part of history about him. First of all, let me tell you that he lived in, his family lived in Fortingale Street, or Presbyterian family. Uh, I mean, they lived in Fortingale Street because of redevelopment at that time. They actually moved to six different houses in Fortingale Street. He eventually moved to Glen Farm Street across Agnes Street. Then he moved to uh, up beside the jail uh, in terms of Lawnscape Terrace, which we now know was a garage and a funeral parlour in the back of the jail. Uh, so that's where they, they moved to. So the family had lived about the shangle and went to Lons Lon Lonscape Terrace. From Lonscape Terrace, he moved to uh, the West, West Lawn Road. And when he died in 1968, he did, as my understanding was, he died in poverty in Salisbury Avenue. Uh, they buried him in Pres uh, buried him from Presbyterian from the Presbyterian Church, church in Townsend Street, and I know there's at least one person that's in the audience. I can't actually see him now; he's disappeared. Oh, there's two, uh, uh, as well as the Reverend. Uh, there was also Billy Patterson, who everybody will know as the person who works in the Shankar Community Council. So both of them attended that funeral, and one of the commentators. Uh, on commentating on the funeral actually turned around and said that it actually was like a state funeral. It was the biggest funeral I'd ever seen outside of a state funeral. It was massive. Uh, so he was well thought of. But getting, ba getting back to his, his life, uh, he went to school in Avoca Street. It was uh, Erskine uh, School in Avoca Street, which isn't there any longer, but that's the school he went to. Uh, he also, whenever he went to work, he worked uh, in Allen and Co. Uh, and he worked with a number of other artists and their job was to actually do posters and they painted posters because they had no other way of doing it. Um, what they used was that they used stone and paper and wax crayons and they all had to do the outlines with black crayons and they were known as the black men. That was what their name was uh, and that's what they did. And he found uh, that this was a, a wonderful way of working and what he did then was that he started, whenever he started doing uh, sketches and other things. He started using hard paper and black crayons to do the sketches and there's a number of them about. But one of the biggest contributions I think that people at Shackle will want to know is that what he did uh, was that he produced a number of postcards and he also produced three paintings, one of Carson, uh, one of Richardson uh, and the third one uh, escapes me. But anyway, the three of them were sold. One, the first one for seven guineas, the second one for six and five. 
and the proceeds of that went to the UVF hospital. He also produced postcards, uh, a number of small postcards, and one of them was called For Us, which was uh, a 36 hundred division soldier land wounded being attended by uh, a nurse. Uh, and they went on sale in the Robinson Cleaver building in city centre, and they were sold uh, as postcards, and then they were turned into Christmas cards. And that's what he done. And all those proceeds went to the UVF hospital. Uh, that's the sort of person he was. He was very generous. But one of the things I do want to say is that uh, I was incarcerated in Long Cash uh, in the 70s and the 80s. And one of the things that, that we did, we lived in what were called Nissen Huts, uh, and they had a number of walls in them uh, that were sort of pre provided square cubicles. And we had art in every one of those, those pieces. They've all disappeared now. Uh, as far as I know, they're somewhere in Malay in, in, in the old Borstal, uh, but we can't retrieve them because they're dead end that they're there. But that's where they're removed whenever they're closed on cash down. But whenever we were doing the art, and um, Gusty Spence was the leader uh, in Long Cash, one of the things that it was well thought out, it just wasn't that we were going to do a piece of art. We wanted to pick not just Belfast but Northern Ireland, and a number of things were depicted. And uh, Connor was a big influence in how we actually depicted it, that because he was depicting the things. Uh, that Eamon talked about, the Shawleys, the Swings, the Orange Order, and uh, not only Orange Order, but he also did a hurling match as well. And those were the things that were happening in Belfast at the time, that's what he's seen. Uh, and my understanding is that he, he used to go out into Belfast and shackle in other places when he was doing these drawings, and he went out uh, in scruffy clothes, and he also uh, carried about a rolled up newspaper, and inside it was his crayons and his paper. And he would have stopped when he seen people doing things in the street. And you will see that these are children swinging around a lamp post. Uh, and he just sat and he actually started to draw these. That's the sort of person he was. He showed the poverty that existed in Belfast. And we know today that we're at a protest, we're at a parade, you know, um, it's happening today. We're surrounded by iPhones and iPods and people who are proper uh, photographers with proper cameras and stuff. Uh, and they take photographs. And, you know, the stuff that he did, the artistry that he was actually to create, uh, was phenomenal because it actually showed you the poverty that existed at the time. But not only did it show you the poverty, it showed you the happiness in the children's faces and how they, they sort of, whether they were poor or not, they still enjoyed the games they were doing or whatever it was they were doing. Uh, and so that was a big influence in terms of us. Uh, in terms of the Arts Council and uh, Roisin, who spoke first, Roisin actually commissioned me to do this piece. Uh, and this is a piece uh, which is about loyalist art. Uh, and I actually uh, I put this together and I was helped by a bit of research from Dr. William Mitchell and also Robert Nibbler, who's a playwright, both of whom were ex prisoners and, and actually were incarcerated with me. But on the cover of this, uh, you know, they put a Connor painting, and it's only part of it because this is, uh, he depicted a photograph or a, a, a painting in 1932 which depicted Ulster past and present, and that was the present. And that was the sort of the millies uh, and the men going to shipyards. You can see that the mills in the background and the, and the structures in the shipyards which actually would identify. It was industrialisation in Belfast. That's what he was, that he was doing. But in the middle here, anybody who's ever visited Jan String will know that those monolithic stones are there. It was in the middle, and on the other side was the Gaelic kings walking out, and this was walking in. In terms of long cash, we actually took a variation of this and actually did a piece in Long Cash. And it was his influence on how you could actually have uh, different societies at different times in one painting uh, and how it would work. Uh, so we were very influenced by that. One of the things I do want to say is that all the things that we did was like, we had a pawn shop from the Old Lodge Road. And that pawn shop wasn't far from where he grew up and where his, his family had lived. Uh, and I just want to give an experience of my own because Quite a lot of people are very, and particularly today when we know there are food banks and people are very sensitive around this. You know, I grew up in the shackle and poverty, and I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, and whenever I seen, you know, the work of uh, Connor, it actually made me feel proud. I used to remember hearing people talking when I was a child, you know, about hankering back to the old days and about nostalgia. And I used to wonder what they were talking about because they were running about with shawls and they had a shoe on their foot, but they wanted to go back to the old days. And I never understood that. But the, I just want to tell the story, because Downing Street was over there. Uh, my granny lived in Foreman Street. And every every so often, my granny had a big darning needle, and she had uh, a mattress, which was full of straw. Full of straw. And she had a hussein sack. 
uh, which I think when I was growing up, people kept potatoes in. And she used to get that sack, open this with open her, her mattress, it was slip, so it was darned, and she opened it up and took a straw out. And the straw had to be replenished. And we took it to the gateway in Downing Street, and I can remember helping her with the bags. And the guy who owned the gateway had horses and pigs and everything else. And he gave us fresh straw to put back into the mattress. Uh, that's, that was one of my earliest things I remember. I'm not ashamed to say that. Although I, I do remember that whenever I was in, in prison, Republicans used to talk about poverty. And when I told them that story, they used to go, ah, it's not true, you all had jobs. You know, it wasn't true. You know, uh, this, the Shackle Road, in fact, actually returned independent councillors more often than anybody else. And that was because they weren't necessarily happy with what was happening up in the hill. Because big house unionism was looking after the very middle class and weren't looking after the poor. But that's the sort of thing we lived in. And people in my generation, I'm sure, uh, will remember that. And people who are older than me will even remember harder times. They were hard times, but you know what? They were good times. And uh, you know, the one thing that I remember about it was that we were all very proud. In my street, if somebody made stew, it didn't matter whether there was 10 people in their family, everybody could get a bowl of it and went to the door. And that's what we did. And we had that community spirit. And that was the thing that held the shackle together. And, you know, the reason why I'm telling that story is not to, for people to feel sorry for me. I don't want people to feel sorry for me because I'm proud of my past. But what I want the people to understand is that whenever I seen the, the sort of artwork from Connor, it was the thing that actually made me start to think about what it all was about. The shackle was a great place to live. It was a great place to be brought up on. And you know what? It, everybody knew it as the heart of the empire. But unfortunately, this empire was poor. I'll just finish with one story because Dusty Spencer, I can recall, was in a bookies in the shangle, and this was in the 60s. He'd just come back from whatever war he'd been fighting with the British because he fought in quite a lot of wars, like Cyprus and Aden and stuff. But he, was in, he went into the bookies, and two guys in the bookies were arguing about who owned Australia. And when Gusty walked in, somebody says, he's well read, he'll know. So they asked Gusty who owned Australia, and he says, we do, but you know what, you don't even have a nurse in your trousers. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will unveil the statue of William Honor, the people's painter. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, friends. I would like to thank you all for attending today. We'd just like to thank all who gave their time and expertise to make this event happen. happen. Especially Kelly Crawford from Alternatives, the Reverend Edith Query, George Newell, Stephen Hearn, and all the funders, as well as Sam McLean, Noel Parker, Jim Hanna, and of course the SPB. And especially all of Michaela's for the never ending supply of tea. Okay? Right, everybody is invited back to the Spectrum Centre to the William Connor Room. There's an exhibition of his art and there are refreshments. Thank you very much indeed everybody for attending.